Hello, I am Max, the boyfriend. And I'm Seely, the girlfriend. And this is a girlfriend's glimpse where I make Seely watch things that she otherwise wouldn't. Today, we're going to be talking about the Marvel series that came out around 2021 called What If? And I feel like a lot of people have kind of overlooked it. It obviously got its due. It was, it was kind of going the rounds as it was coming out week to week. But I love this show. And Seely, what did you think about it? I loved it too. I like I like thinking about and entertaining the possibilities of different outcomes, especially when um, in Avengers, was it Endgame or it must have been Endgame when Doctor Strange was going through like 14 million oh, yeah. different possibilities and only one was the <laughs> that winning was a, one. The for Infinity that. War. Yeah, that yeah. was that was such a cool moment. And just talking about obviously getting into the whole multiverse of the phases that marvel's doing now some people don't really like it the whole idea of a multiverse kind of makes stakes obsolete because if someone dies then you can just pluck another version out of another universe and by all intents and purposes it's the same person which they do in one of these episodes <laughs> well multiple yeah or at least one, no one in particular, they do this. I mean, they kind of do that with Gamora, but James Gunn let that have stakes. But what if, should we just run through the episodes? Because I feel like there's plenty to say about each of them. Yeah. So the first episode, honestly, my least favorite is what if Captain Carter were the first Avenger? And that's just uh, Peggy Carter getting the serum and... The only reason why I didn't love this episode when it first came out was because it was just a retelling of the first Captain America movie, and I was worried that this series would just be retellings of movies, but they quickly divert from that. But what did you think of this episode? I mean, I liked it. Girl power, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I hated it because there was a woman in it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and the animation kind of right off the bat it is really, really good. Usually I'm not a fan of this kind of cell-shaded-ish animation, but they, it's given budget and effort and time, and I love that. Well, it looks like comic book characters, the way that it's animated. It looks like they just like started moving yeah. out, out of the pages, because <laughs> I, I liked it. I liked mm. the animation style, and I thought it was good. I mean, I think it could have used some, like, old-school pow. Blam. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fun for even one episode. Or, I mean, that's more of a Batman DC thing, but they, they still could have done it. <laughs> they still could have used that kind of fun aspect, even though there's plenty of fun to be had. Is there much else to say about the first episode? Um, well, I do remember, I think I asked you during our watching of it, mm -hmm. is... What is it like in terms of like progression and getting shit done compared to when Captain America was the leader <laughs> of the Avengers and then versus Peggy? Mm, I think Peggy did a lot more like she's just more proactive and that's done multiple times over this entire season where they pluck a character and put him in the place of another and they do a lot better than the original character. I don't know if Peggy is that much better than what Steve did. I mean, it's like I said before, it's pretty much just the exact same story as the first Avenger, but we can kind of move on to the second episode where it is a drastic change where T'Challa becomes Star-Lord. And rather than just being the Han Solo-ish character that Star-Lord is... Wakanda forever. Yeah, T'Challa just gets shit done. And um, this And Chadwick Boseman actually recorded it. Mm -hmm. Like he actually did he actually did these videos before he passed. Which is And they could not have known <laughs> anything that was going on, and yet it's still such a touching send off. Obviously, I don't think we've seen Black Panther 2. That is the real send off to Chadwick Boseman. Mm -hmm. But these episodes do it so gracefully, especially episode two, where it's basically T'Challa's episode, mm -hmm. though he comes back many, many times. He's like if Star-Lord had his shit together and didn't have a bunch of baggage. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Even just... though he still had plenty of baggage, he just, he was getting stuff done. 
No offense to Peter Quill. Love Peter. But... Yeah. Peter's great. He's he's the Han Solo, like I said before, which we all love to see, <laughs> but we also love to see a very competent person getting stuff done. Mm-hmm. And he convinced Thanos not to do his whole plan. Yeah, how? I have no fucking clue. But he I don't did know it. how. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you could convince him to do it, but he just comes on screen and goes, yeah, I, I guess I, it takes a big man to just admit when they're wrong. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you, I still what? claim it would have been efficient. It's like, oh, okay, Thanos, I, I see where you're coming from. How about just double the resources? How about that? Yeah, that <laughs> probably would have killed him, but he's he's willing to die for the cause, so... Yeah, and he didn't die the first time. No. And he even used the stones to destroy the stones. Though that, we're, we're getting off topic, but that, that did get pretty close to killing him. Yeah, but, but he didn't. <laughs> the, the whole second episode is a heist, and I love that so much. It's a, they're stealing, I don't even remember, something, some seed for from the collector, mm -hmm. who is never really that much of a villain in the movies, but... He kind of goes back to his comic roots where he is just crazy. Yeah, he's he just gets every little thing he can and dissects it, living or not. So, oh my gosh, sounds yeah. like a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. He just likes to collect stuff. He likes to have at least one of everything. Mm -hmm. Which I I kind of wish they brought him back in the movies to be that villainous person. But at least we got it in this episode of what if yeah i bet he wished he could have gotten his hands on the infinity stones well i mean he had his hands on one almost the space stone the the power or one he the had his hands stone? on the reality too oh the, anyway. i guess the space stone was in possession of the asgardians or i'm trying to remember the the space stone or the tesseract the humans had it for a little bit it depends on when this yeah. takes place. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a whole timeline, and that's what I love about Marvel is you can take these MacGuffins and you can be like, you can just place so much importance on them, <laughs> and suddenly you care about where it was in the 90s and the fact that Captain Marvel had it in a lunchbox for the Fez. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, second episode, incredibly touching. I cannot believe they did it so well. Mm -hmm. And they even did like a little tip of the hat afterward in loving mm -hmm. memory of Chadwick Boseman. Mm -hmm. And that is just always so touching. Mm -hmm. But the third episode, What If the World Lost Its Mightiest Heroes, I kind of like this just as the murder mystery that it is. I mean, what what did you think of it? If the World Lost Its Mightiest Heroes, can you remind me what That's, that episode happened? It starts up and uh, Iron Man is killed. <laughs> From just something we don't know what, and then oh, Thor is killed, and then yep, I Hulk now. is killed, and then Hawkeye yeah. is killed, and that Black one Widow. that one felt a little crazy to me because I'm like, how? Okay, spoiler alert! It, yeah. it was the OG Ant Man, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I loved, but it, it took me a while to catch on to that and understand what was happening because I was like, how can you kill Hulk? How could how could that happen? Like he's <laughs> impenetrable essentially, or how can you just? Well, it, and they accused and Black a Widow lot of the stuff of that doing happens, it. yeah. And it, then they accused Hawkeye of doing it, and then Hawkeye and then died. he died. Took the L. <laughs> now, I loved this episode in that you have no idea what's going on. You know that there's someone going around killing the Avengers, but you you don't know who. But it makes logical sense that it could be the original Hank Pym Ant Man, and it's also <laughs> just a tip of the hat to the comics because Hank Pym. For a brief time goes a little crazy and I, the suit that he's wearing at the end of the third episode is the yellow jacket suit which they turned into mm -hmm. the villain of the first movie but that's yellow jacket is hank pym evil version from the comics which is just really cool to see yeah i mean the I just like I liked Nick Fury's part too and, yes and I was and then all of a sudden and then Loki comes down with his army because <laughs> Because yeah, he he's does. pissed about <laughs> Thor, even though he's not probably not that angry about it. Well, I'm sure they loved each other in some I way. I think he wanted an excuse to fight. Yeah, that's how I saw I'm it. I'm pretty sure he just wanted an excuse to come and uh, terrorize Midgard, <laughs> Earth. <Yeah>. But, <laughs> but I mean, uh, what else do you have to say with this episode? I mean, there's it's not too much. No, not not too much. I mean, at the end, he goes, well, you better at least uh, honor her sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And then he gets taken away. 
because it was all about his daughter Hope. <laughs> it was all about Hope, they kept on saying. Hope. <laughs> but the fourth episode objectively might be the best just emotion wise it's what if dr strange lost his heart oh. instead of his hands and this one it, it's it's just very good at first dr strange goes back in time because it he tries to save christine because in this world he, instead of having his hands crushed and he tries to fix that his, christine dies and he tries to save mm -hmm. her goes back and it's a a What's, what did they call it? An important... A fixed group? point. Fixed point. I think yeah. that there that might be Doctor Who, but whatever. The, it, it means Something that they like can't that. go they back can't and change, change it. it. Because yeah. it's like a, almost like a canon event. Mm -hmm. It's important for that timeline. Right, because if he went back in time and saved Christine, then that means that he never trained and yeah. defeated the Dormammu, yeah. or whatever it was. Well, and he tried to save her, but it just kept happening no matter what he did. <laughs> yeah, he went back and like he convinced her to just go to pizza, and then they got shot. And then he left her, and then her apartment explodes. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he, he really did try, and I mean, he lost his way a little bit, got a little too obsessed with it, and started mm -hmm. ignoring the what she called the ancient one yeah the ancient one yeah the ancient one because she was like stop <laughs> stop what you're doing <laughs> it, just quit there's even a moment where because the uh, good doctor strange and the evil doctor strange have a fight and the evil one is labeled as evil and the ancient one says well she he's more just misguided you know because yeah, he's still <laughs> he's not inherently evil but he does you know, spend centuries at that ancient library, yeah, just absorbing other sorcerers from other universes. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they're sorcerers, maybe just other beings so that he can take their energy. I'm pretty sure they were so... sorcerers because a lot of them, you know, especially the tentacle guy, what his mm. name is, he's so I <laughs> one thing came up while we were watching it, and that is there there's a big tentacle monster that pops up in more than a couple episodes. And I believe that is Shumagorath, who is the Sorcerer Supreme from the Dark Dimension. So it's just, he's another being who's a sorcerer, and he has Doctor Strange's position, but just in an alternate universe. And I don't know if that's him, because I feel like he would be more powerful, and he, we would... Well, we don't see his full body. We yeah. All we see is like his little tentacles that come out and try to grab whatever's there and mm -hmm. kill him or drag him to the other dimension. We don't actually see his full body right. or full being and the few times that we do <laughs> see him it's when dr strange like cuts his tentacles off and then absorbs them he, so that I, was the only one he didn't absorb the entirety of the and maybe being. it's because he couldn't maybe it's just too much <laughs> yeah i i would i would buy that but that's if it's shumagorath well, and they never outright say that and then they and then they brings up this giant cockroach looking dude with a cape and he goes <laughs> oh nice cape steals the cape and sends the cockroach back because he's, he's like, like no i, I don't do bugs, bugs. Yeah. i don't do bugs <laughs> Same, that's good but. it's a cool looking cape though he's got the purple one and it's even higher on the collar he's like, got the the evil disco collar like mega mine <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's perfect he does he looks a fair amount like mega mind and you even don't really notice the change that he undergoes, though it is over centuries of years that they clarify later. But until we see the good Doctor Strange and the evil Doctor Strange next to each other, and you're like, oh, you are you got some bags under your eyes, buddy. He's out of it. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> tired. <laughs> but this animation, too, their fight, incredible. Mm -hmm. There's a cape fight that they throw in there. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and then at and then at the end when he tries to save her and he succeeds, quote unquote, he mm. doesn't really succeed for very long because she just evaporates because he destroyed that specific timeline. Yep, and he it basically entraps himself in a little ball <laughs> for seemingly forever. Yeah, and he right, can't do anything. But... Right before then, he is able to <laughs> see the Watcher and speak to the Watcher, and he says, "Please, I need your help. I've read about you. I'm pretty sure you can help." I cannot interfere. <laughs> and yeah, the Watcher's whole thing is that he can't interfere. That's something we haven't even brought up yet. What mm -hmm. did you think of the Watcher? Um, I don't know if I fully agree with not interfering <laughs> all the time. I feel like mm -hmm. sometimes. Isn't the point for him to, you know, watch over all the timelines? And if one of them is being completely destroyed by something that 
like what Doctor Strange was doing, which was like an unnatural destruction mm. where he was enforcing it. I feel like that would that would be a good reason to interfere and say, hey, let's not do that. I would argue if it's a story that the Watcher already knows about, then that's even more so that he can't interfere because he's just watching it happen, whether it's the world ending or a happy ending. The bystander effect. Mm -hmm. But but that's his know. that's the and his name is Uatu, I think is how you pronounce it. But he's played by uh, Jeffrey Wright, which I don't know if you know the name, but he's Gordon in the newest Batman movie. Huh. Which is fun. <laughs> <laughs> he's also a voice everywhere. He's in Westworld. He's Jeffrey Wright's awesome. But with the fourth episode and all of that crazy fun animation and that bonkers ending where it's just sad and depressing we can move on to the fifth which is one of the <laughs> most fun episodes which it's the title it's is definitely what if, the most ridiculous yeah, one zombies what if zombies <laughs> yeah. yeah and it it draws a whole lot from the marvel zombies storyline maybe not enough because i could use a whole movie in this though they have announced that in this Marvel Zombies universe that this episode takes place in, we're going to get a season's worth of animation that's coming out in the next few years. Apocalypse. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I think it's just called Zombies. But yeah, I'm very excited for that show. But what did you think about this Zombies episode? I liked the Zombies episode. It was it was strange. I was wondering, you know, how that would have came to be. And then they showed. <laughs> be they went back and showed... Um, when janet when, yeah when she when he went back or his her <laughs> husband og ant-man i can't talk went back to find her in the quantum realm and she had contracted a disease from there that mm -hmm. rots the mind it keeps a little bit left of you but not enough and <laughs> brought her ass back <laughs> and spread an entire apocalypse and all and then apparently scott's Head was the only thing that remained of him. Yeah, not great. But it, it leads to some zombie shenanigans and we get all the survivors who I think is just just the people that are left, which is like Spider-Man, Bucky, one of the Dora Milaje warriors. I forgot Hope. her name. Mm -hmm. Well, Hope is one of them. And mm -hmm. then um... Sharon Carter, one of the tech guys from Ant-Man who is um also polka dot man was happy happy was one of them yep. yep and he's saving himself for thor so maybe thor's around too <laughs> no, happy's <laughs> happy's death was Blam. ridiculous he got one of i think it was one of iron man's gloves or something yeah. like that like stark tech and he was able to shoot from him and he was testing out going blam 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 doing the sound effects <laughs> he got grabbed by the ankle and dragged into the darkness no. and you could just hear him go blam blam it, it wasn't by the ankle though he got shot in oh, the yeah. shoulder and all he had to say was ow yeah he went ow and then got dragged in darkness he's going blam 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 <laughs> all the way in there it just lights up randomly in the dark as it gets further away <laughs> and you're like oh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh it sucks to see you go but yeah this episode so much so much fun and then the next episode they switch it back up again with more sadness and characters that you like dying with what if killmonger rescued tony stark so it starts out with the very first iron man movie and instead of iron man learning the valuable lesson and saving himself from the cave that you know his own situation put himself in he is rescued and he makes gundams from anime <laughs> and it's fantastic <laughs> I know, but the but Killmonger, he ain't got no loyalty to anybody. Apparently, <laughs> he's always playing four D chess against five Everybody. different people. Yeah, yeah. He t he tricked Tony Stark mm -hmm. into making his empire for him, essentially, and then going, "Oh, you found out too much. You're gone." <laughs> Pepper suspected the whole time though, because mm. you know, yeah, women know everything. No. <laughs> We also haven't mentioned a lot of the voice actors that return. Uh, Chadwick Boseman we mentioned, but for this episode, they couldn't get Robert Downey Jr. because he's way too expensive. He had a higher pitch voice in this one for whoever yeah. was the voice actor. It was a little bit more nasally. <laughs> it kind of takes you out of it, but yeah, they, 
they're they're not going to get Iron Man back for this. That that's too much money. He he said once I'm once I'm dead in Endgame, I'm dead. <laughs> yep. Bye. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> He's in serious movies now, like Oppenheimer and Doctor Doolittle remake. I mean, Oppenheimer was pretty <laughs> fantastic. Oh, it, it was, <laughs> and Robert Downey Jr. killed it in that. Mm-hmm. Mm. But this episode, kind of like what I was saying earlier, it's it's a little bit darker. It's uh, Chadwick Boseman is in it, and he's killed pretty quickly as soon as you've seen him. Mm-hmm. It, <laughs> but he comes back in the spirit realm for a mm-hmm. little bit and as a nice. Black Panther. Yeah, and talks tries to talk to his cousin, going, "What are you doing, <laughs> dude? Stop this! You're gonna atone in that life and this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna be great." <laughs> and we even see. I figured he would get a some kind of. I don't know, send off in the finale of some sort, but when we're getting there, he comes back in a big way, as do they all. So we get to see exactly the consequences of all of his actions, which pretty quickly blows up in his face, which I guess is nice to see for villains. (laughs) But the next episode, I can tell it was the most fun for you. I think I had the most fun with zombies, but you really really liked what if thor were an only child it was hilarious he became a frat boy <laughs> and this and was he, just a party episode. yeah he invaded he invaded earth and it starts out with <laughs> jane and um darcy <laughs> sitting and going oh my god there's an alien invasion nobody's listening to us they're coming and he comes and he lands in vegas and then he goes <laughs> all right midgard who's here to party <laughs> and they just party and he just keeps destroying national monuments <laughs> and the well, wonders of the world with sometimes his buddies. it's not him it's Surtur trying to hit on the statue of liberty and, for some reason. and melts her arm off and then goes oh shit i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'll just uh leave yep and then loki um went back to his mm-hmm. people i forget what they're called the big blue the ice frost guys. giants the frost giants and mm-hmm. he's he's their prince <laughs> so and he came back and he's just as bad and encouraging Loki, him he, well he seems actually well adjusted all things considered because like, he has a throne yeah loki <laughs> and thor are both much more naive and stupid but they're way happier oh yeah i think it's because they grew up separately <laughs> exactly no, they weren't able to give each other life lessons yep. and then jane had to call thor's mommy <laughs> to come and make him stop that's such a good joke <laughs> did I, you call my mom not cool <laughs> i think standalone like one person on one person fighting this episode has the best surprisingly mm-hmm. captain marvel and thor that fight there's a one take in it where the camera is just kind of pushing in it's so incredible and the power that they can put on screen especially when they go to that desert and every time they fly around the map is labeled underneath i know them. that is just beating them into different countries <laughs> <laughs> no that fight was fantastic i i loved the idea of the you know, the whole story in this episode. I remember them waking up after the drunk night out and I thought they were going to do a hangover where they just forget everything and they have to find out what they did the night before, but... Nope. Nope. He went to France because his buddies were absolutely Jones and for a crate or something like that. <laughs> something, yeah. <laughs> no, this episode frat was so boy. funny. <laughs> i think it was hilarious and then he had to clean up his mess afterward and pretend like he went there for a work study or something yeah <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but he gets away with it Calls my kind mom. of <laughs> it wasn't a cool thing to do but it was the right thing mm-hmm. and he still got the girl <laughs> yep it kind of there's a happy ending and then ultron steps in Son through another me. universe <laughs> <laughs> yep which is the next one mm-hmm. what if ultron won that was horrid. That yeah. was horrible. Like there was, <laughs> fuck. There was. It's didn't it start out? No, that would have been. Is that no, the next that, one, or was I, that the? It did it start out with one where, uh, Widow yep. and Clint and were the only ones left, like the only humans, and they were fighting <laughs> against just. They were in Russia, and a bunch of Ultron bots were trying to find them, and I don't know, probably kill them. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they were just fighting him, and they were looking for a certain file about, uh, what's his face? I forgot his Face name. in the chest. Something like that. He was- Zemo. No. Yes. Well, he was an AI file that um, was meant to, you know, be a Hydra agent. Oh. And 
Right. Zola, not Zemo. <laughs> Zemo's another Captain America villain. Oh my Zola. God. <laughs> <laughs> And he has this typical... <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's... I think he has a point of saying that he's Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> and he has these little round glasses and his digital ones and zeros green face. Yeah. Now, Zemo's great. And I was... As soon as he was in this show and they bring him back a bunch, I wanted to see him... I, I should pull up a picture of comic book Zemo. <sighs> Just because of, he's just so ridiculous. And if you're listening now, definitely look it up. Oh my god, you know, he looks like Mr. Electric. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's just a regular guy, but he tries to, you know, make himself immortal or tries to make himself last longer. Well, he kind of looks like him. that towards the very, very end yeah. in the next episode. And that's what I love. They make him the <clears throat> chest face guy. They, they had to do it. Yeah. But what the only thing about this episode that really hurt, like I got butt hurt, was mm. when Clint said, I just don't want to fight anymore. And, and he, he sacrificed had... himself and left Natasha alone. <laughs> like had... all alone. <laughs> but he had to have the end game moment where it's him instead of Black Widow, which is fantastic. And that yeah. shot is wallpaper worthy where he's flying down and he's shooting the arrow and it's about to explode. Incredible. But it was sad because I, I, Clint, he's arguably one of my favorite Avengers. Like, because yeah. he's just he's he's a normal human being. He's just exceptionally good at what he does. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else except for Natasha has like power ups. I even Natasha, there's argument that she could have super soldier serum, but Hawkeye, he's just a guy who has perfect aim. And that's true with all And he can all flick things. coins to like yeah. kill people. We we will definitely talk about the Hawkeye series because we watched it, and I'm surprised with how much it you was, liked it. It was great. <laughs> I liked it a lot. I like. It. I think it's just because I like Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we've talked about in just everyday life, not on pod, is how much we both like regular superheroes yeah where they're just a person and they're standing among gods and they're just able to and they keep do up that. yeah because they're the best at what they do oh, i yeah. love seeing that it's it's great that's why that's why hawkeye is probably you know arguably my favorite avenger because he's mm -hmm. just exceptional at what he does natasha had the benefit well not benefit necessarily <laughs> but of being like trained by elites and mm. you know she was just kind of she was she was basically you know groomed to be an assassin, which <laughs> yeah, she's incredibly you're not wrong. good at. But Hawkeye, I I don't know his whole I, backstory, but I think he's just like it's. I'm sure he was trained <clears throat> by the best of the best in the movies, but in the comics, he was just an orphan who was raised in the circus, mm -hmm. and that's how he was so good. And at he maintains stuff. a family outside of everything, mm -hmm. unless they you know unless Ultron won. <laughs> yeah, unless. <laughs> family dies but yeah he's has a happy family and he keeps it secret for a little bit until mm -hmm. the age of mm -hmm. ultron movie where we find out about that yeah. and i don't blame him for keeping it secret Hell it keeps no. them safe yeah <laughs> and then you had that ronin about during the blip mm -hmm. but that's another story <laughs> Honestly, i would love to see more about that with his ronin stuff but yeah we'll talk about that probably when we review hawkeye but mm -hmm. So Natasha and Clint are the last people ever. They're looking mm -hmm. for Zola and Ultron can, well, while he's destroying the universe and once he's done with that, he's able to see the Watcher and get into the Watcher's <laughs> domain and they start fighting. Oh, yeah. The Watcher called him out, but he's like, oh, shit, he can hear me. Because <laughs> he was going, as Ultron stands. <laughs> Where he murdered everyone. <laughs> Where everything is gone, he he might actually have some sense of regret and loneliness. And he goes, who is talking? And he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, no. Like the he realization turns nearly around and he's broke like, the machine. And he's like, what are you? Where are you? <laughs> there are other universes. And he's like, no, nope, no, they're not. And cuts it off. <laughs> and then Holtron finds him again. Mm -hmm. And I talked... his domain. Earlier, I talked about some incredible one-on-one -on -one fights but ultron versus the watcher is so cosmically powerful and their punches are leveling planets and that moment where the watcher is being dragged or he's 
pushed and he's cracked through universe after universe and it keeps on going and it's all one shot Mm -hmm. it that had my jaw on the floor i guess every time that i watch it because i've rewatched it many many times at this point it's 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 pretty cool yeah to just it because the watcher is is just an omniscient being he's almost mm-hmm. godlike yeah in the sense that i mean he just kind of you know watches doesn't intervene he has the power to if he wanted to mm-hmm. but he makes a point of saying he's not a god but our i would argue he is at least a small g like a celestial being mm-hmm. and the fact that ultron could not only see him and talk to him and hear him mm-hmm. he could go into his domain isn't is the in-between between universes where the watcher just resides and looks at everything he Mm. was able to go i found you (laughs) and i was like oh hell no (laughs) the watcher kicks him out and then (laughs) ultron just comes back and he's like oh yeah in the multiverse anything's possible remember me bitch (laughs) (laughs) i'm back it's Brittany. guess who's back 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 again again. (laughs) (laughs) but yeah this episode kind of ends with the watcher losing that battle and he runs away to dr strange's little prison that we last saw in the fourth episode he's like man i done fucked up i need some help (laughs) (laughs) and then dr strange convinces him to break his oath yep which there's no consequences for for the watcher he just kind of holds it and goes no i'm sacred i'm hoping there are consequences for that in season two who would who would it like we, we talked about this, too, because I don't think the Watcher has any accountability. He, All of the Watchers go to their respective places, and they watch stuff, and then they every now and then they come back together, reconvene, and they talk about what they've seen, and then they just go out again. So maybe the Watcher just leaves this stuff out. It's like a book club. It's exactly <laughs> a book club. That's, that's exactly what it is. They're a bunch of big-headed baby book club nerds <laughs> with capes yeah <laughs> but i do love the watchers though i think we have seen them in live action in guardians 2 yeah we saw it there they cameoed or one of them cameoed for a little bit i remember mm. i kind of remember that because i was like what the hell is that because <laughs> it was revealed that stan lee mm. was actually an informant for the watchers and that's why <laughs> he kept on recurring in every movie oh god stan lee should have lived forever <laughs> which i don't know how or why james gunn thought of that but i'm so glad he did that is the perfect explanation for all of stan lee's cameos that he's an informant for the watcher <laughs> right because the, the watcher only has two eyes i guess <laughs> yeah well it's funny you say that because there's an, an amazing comic storyline where the watcher is killed and someone takes both of his eyes and uses them to watch different stuff gross it's, it's a murder <laughs> mystery too and you're trying to figure out the whole time who you can killed kill him. a watcher and they essentially take his place too that's terrifying yeah like gotta be you gotta be a god (laughs) (laughs) that story is original sin if you want to check that out definitely do it's great but the next episode episode nine and the series finale what if the watcher broke his oath Mm. i'd argue is a perfect 10 out of 10 season finale it would have been 11 out of 10 if they got james spader back to voice ultron like he did in the movie because his voice is buttery smooth (laughs) but whoever they got did a good enough job and like i said this finale is perfect it was really good yeah the fact that they i like i at first really didn't understand why they chose who they chose Mm -hmm. but it tied all the seasons together even though that most of them were all completely separate universes yeah well and the fact that um the natasha from the zombies not the zombies the natasha from the ultron what if ultron won Mm mm-hmm she was she was basically as as far as she knew the last human. Yeah. I'm and, pretty sure she was, which is just <laughs> depressing. Yeah, and she she was she she had nothing to lose, so right. might as well, right? <laughs> might and then they do, got do Captain Carter to, to bring mm-hmm. there. I don't know why the hell they picked Killmonger. <laughs> he, he he's a backstabbing motherfucker and he even does that. Yeah. At the end. Well, <laughs> we're <laughs> jumping ahead, but yeah, it's explained that their plan wasn't to defeat Ultron or anything like that. It was simply to make it so that, you know, you take the stones away and then Killmonger and uh, Zola Ultron are in this infinite battle to take the stones and you put that in a prison realm 
And then, bing, bang, boom. It's all taken care of. <laughs> Which, yeah, the Watcher apparently foresaw all of that. I mean, he obviously needed help. <laughs> but... But yeah, he needed all of those people to just do a ring around for Ultron so that they could right. finally and get him. And they picked the frat boy Thor. <laughs> like, he all he actually just was the distraction for most of the time. Because Pretty much. He was, ah, oh, like, shooting light, lightning at him. And it was this big dramatic scene. Oh. And Ultron just like, it's like a static in between his fingers. <laughs> and he goes, okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah. All throughout that whole episode is some fantastic animation. There's a amazing one shot where all of the I was about to say Avengers, but I think they're the Guardians of the Multiverse, which is a new name. Never, I don't think heard from in the comics, but they're all bearing down on Ultron, and it's fantastic. There's there's moments where you know they're using different stones, and Ultron blows up the universe, and then Doctor Strange takes that power and swallows it. My God, yeah, I, I remembered that. I, at first, I didn't understand what happened. I thought he swallowed the soul stone for a minute, and I was yeah. like, "Why? <laughs> like, <laughs> Isn't that gonna do something to your guts?" Why? <laughs> like, and no, he just swallowed the explosion that would have destroyed that planet or universe or mm -hmm. wherever they were. I, I mean, just on the roll of talking about cool moments, there's also a moment where Thor throws his hammer and then doctor strange multiplies it so there's hundreds of hammers <laughs> the swarm of hammers and, those, <laughs> and they always aim for his head like it's it's just a, it was like oh. a, if it were a pack of seagulls going <laughs> ah! and just mine dunk, 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 dunk. <laughs> oh man it was fantastic they bring back the zombies for a second because scarlet witch like she distracts Ultron for maybe a fraction of a second. Yeah, realized but... her power didn't work like she thought it would, and she went, oh, shit. <laughs> I even think there was a second where Scarlet Witch, as a zombie, looked at Ultron, and she was like, oh, your vision. Aren't you my husband? And he's like, nope. And then <laughs> blows up the entire world. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Yeah, Scarlet Witch obviously still had a little bit of her humanity mm. left in her somewhere deep down because... She still had a fondness and a sense of like recognition for vision. Mm -hmm. She was on a she was on a rampage. That was the worst possible person you could have <laughs> turned into a zombie. <laughs> That's something that we haven't really talked about or we didn't talk about when we were talking about episode five. I said talk about a lot in that sentence. Talk about? Talk about. Talk Let's about. talk about it. Talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the zombies, at least in the comic books, a uh, zombie storyline, they retain everything not just their superpowers and their reflexes and all that but they have the same exact personality so spider-man has the whole guilt of responsibility as he's eating a bunch of people and kingpin who you saw in the hawkeye show he becomes a zombie but he locks his wife up in his penthouse suite and she becomes the last human alive what? because he like he just keeps her alive which is amazing that there's a bunch of What's stuff. What's the point I... of being the last human anyway? I'd be like, you know what? Just change me. Well, I mean, King we'll Pin, zombies. <laughs> he wouldn't let her go. And he wouldn't let her become a zombie or anything like that. You, I can, That's one reason why I can't wait for the zombies TV show. Just to see That'll more of fun. this stuff. But yeah, all of the zombies, they retained most of their consciousness. They were just really, really hungry for flesh. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Get that flesh. But now that we've kind of talked about the whole season, is there anything you wanted to mention with the last episode or anything else with the episodes? Um, just the fact that Natasha was placed in a universe uh, with the Avengers mm -hmm. where that version of her was killed. And I'm pretty sure that was the third episode where they lost all of the Avengers and then Captain America and Captain Marvel went to fight a Loki. <clears throat> and then uh, Black Widow just joins up in that fight, which is just... That was nice to see. Right, and Nick Fury was like, you're not my Natasha, are you? <laughs> you have her spirit. You have her spirit. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, though. I'm mm. glad she got placed, you know, in another universe. Because if he, if the Watcher was like, thanks for your help, it kicks her ass back into the zombie, or the Ultron zone, where she's the last one. <laughs> that would have been such a dick move. <laughs> Sorry, I cannot interfere. Go you gotta, back. <laughs> yeah, gotta go back home. Yeah, she even stayed there and was like, I ain't going back. Full of shit, I ain't leaving. <laughs> well, the door was just a metaphor. 
then he and, just waves his hand. Yeah, and just and does the right thing and does the nice thing and yeah. puts her in a universe where she's not the last human alive. Maybe it fucks up that universe. Maybe we'll see the consequences in season two. I don't think so. I don't but. think it would because she wouldn't be, you know, risking a double. And if her death were like an important, you know, canon event in mm. that in that universe i don't think the watcher would have put her there no because if he knew all the timelines he probably put her in one that would have the least amount of consequences if any exactly but i loved what if so much Mm -hmm. i'm i want to see it for i want to see what if for like a crap ton of other shows Mm -hmm. and series and stories and stuff that would be that would be really cool like like what ifs for a bunch of other things like horror movies too there is in basically an infinite number mm-hmm. of what if comic storylines that they could draw from and i would love to see that i mean season two is coming out as we're recording in a couple days and i believe for nine straight days every day a new episode is going to be coming out so that's going to be a lot of fun i can't yes. believe they're releasing it like that but i love it that'd be awesome mm-hmm. and so with nothing else, too much else to say, out of five brownie points, how much would you give this? I would give it I would give it a five because not only that, I just like Marvel. Mm-hmm. You're you like DC more. I I love it. And I love the Joker too. But mm-hmm. I feel like Marvel um is just something I kind of maybe just grew up with more mm-hmm. than DC. Marvel has always been in the pop culture and they've grown so much. And ever Mm -hmm. since Infinity War and Endgame with Thanos, it's become a staple that Mm -hmm. everyone knows who the Avengers are. It it put a lot of like emotional ties to to Marvel. Exactly. And seeing alternate versions of a lot of the stories that we already know is always fun to see. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah but yeah with that this has been a girlfriend's glimpse into what if yep see you next time